let's do a quick poll uh, before we get started. So who here frequently hears uh, the word algorithms or AI or artificial intelligence? OK, so that's basically the entire room, as to be expected. Uh, who here considers themselves a researcher or researcher in the fields of algorithms or AI? So that's uh, three-ish people, three to four people. I'm going to count you, so that's four people. Good. Uh, and who here cares about social change and social justice? Good. Some brave hands that are not raised, but that's the majority of the people. Great. So this, this disconnect that uh, you just saw between people who um, work in the fields of algorithms and AI and people who care about social justice um, and social change is exactly what I want to talk to you about today. Um, and I'll talk to you about the Mechanism Design for Social Good initiative. But before we get there, I want to tell you how I got to uh, founding this research initiative. So when I was a freshman in college in the fall of 2009, which was about 10 years ago, I was very excited to get to this new city that would be my home for the next four years. And I was a math major, so I spent the majority of my days working on problem sets and training to become a researcher. But I was also very interested in policy and, uh, and inequality. And so on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I would walk down uh, about 10 to 15 minutes from where I lived to Cambridge City Hall, which is this beautiful building in the middle of Central Square. And I would attend uh, Cambridge Public School and Ca Cambridge City Council meetings. And there I got a chance to talk to the mayor, the city councilors, the Cambridge Public School representatives, the city's residents, and I got to learn about various issues that the city was facing from uh, you know, uh, light pollution on the Charles River to, uh, to you know, issues around uh, you know, fixing potholes to also uh, the Cambridge Public Schools. I was very surprised to find that Cambridge Public Schools were struggling in many ways. They faced a budget deficit at the time. They had a lot of organizational difficulties. They were debating what to do with uh, the lack of middle schools and many other things. And one thing that especially stood out to me was that there was this huge achievement gap. Black and Hispanic and low-income students and students with disabilities were severely underperforming their, uh, their peers. And <clears throat> and this issue was so bad that it was actually uh, even uh, recognized at the state level. The, the city was given um, a rating of, I believe, a D for the first time uh, in maybe in their history during my time uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And it was something that they were very fiercely debating uh, and trying to figure out how to address. And for me, as a mathematician, what was especially interesting to me was the role that algorithms were playing in, in exacerbating these already existing inequalities. What was happening at the time was that, uh, that every student was, um, ha should have had equal opportunity to attend any school that they wanted in the city. Um, but the algorithm that was used to assign students to public schools were using proximity to the school that you, uh, proximity to a given school, um, uh, they were either, they're using that as a sort of proxy for, uh, for preference or convenience. And so given that the city was very segregated, a lot of students, low-income students, students of color, were being assigned to underperforming schools. Now, ooh, what did I do? Okay. Now, I myself um, was no stranger to sort of stark inequalities in access to education. I was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, which is a city that has a very beautiful history and culture, and I uh, encourage you to go and visit, but also a city that faced a lot of difficulties. A lot of students uh, didn't have access to, uh, to quality education. Um, a lot of students didn't get to fully realize uh, their talents and, uh, and interests, and, and, and this was something that, um, that I had faced growing up myself uh, in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Now, what I hadn't expected was that I would be facing these challenges in an Ethiopia and then arrive at one of the most educated cities in the world, Cambridge, Massachusetts, which was home to Harvard and MIT and many other schools, um, and to arrive there and to see that black and low-income students like myself would still be facing a lot of the challenges that I myself had faced uh, back in Ethiopia. And this was not just a Cambridge issue. A lot of other cities like Boston, City, New Orleans, San Francisco, Berkeley, uh, I'm guessing also probably San Diego, face the same issues that I talked to you about today. 
a lot of um, a lot of low-income students, students with disabilities, uh, students of color, and many other students that are on the margins of society are not being given access to quality education like many of their other peers. And to me, what's especially interesting is the role that algorithms and AI are playing in either exacerbating these inequalities or maybe even trying to fix them. I got interested in uh, I got interested in this uh, in this interface because of my interest in education. But this is not just an issue in education. It's an issue in hiring. It's an issue in the criminal justice system. It's an issue in health and housing. And you, if you just Google machine learning bias, or if you Google you know algorithms and hiring, you'll be able to find stories upon stories of people who are already underserved in society who are being even further underserved by these new solutions that are coming in and are not completely engaged with the social and political context in which they're being, they're being informed. And this gap that exists between individuals that, uh, that, uh, that write and deploy these uh, algorithmically informed solutions and domain experts who know the ins and outs of exactly what's going on, and then policymakers who actually get to take these and decide to regulate them or not regulate them, decide to deploy them or not deploy them. This gap that exists between these sets of individuals is precisely something that I'm very passionate about and want to address. Nine years since arriving at Cambridge, Massachusetts, I now work at this interface of algorithms and AI in conjunction with the social sciences and other disciplines that have domain expertise in order to promote equality and justice for society. And to address precisely this issue, about two and a half years ago, I co-founded the Mechanism Designed for Social Good Research Initiative with Kira Goldner, who you see in the middle there, and have been since organizing it with Kira Goldner and Irene Lowe. Mechanism Designed for Social Good is a, is a research initiative. It's a multi-institutional, interdisciplinary research initiative with the goal of using insights from algorithms, optimization, mechanism design, AI, in conjunction with other disciplines in order to improve access to opportunity for, community, for communities of individuals for whom opportunities have historically been, have been very limited. And this group started as, a, as an online reading group. So this, there was about 12 of us that uh, wanted to explore this interface and felt that we had a lot to learn from one another. And so we set, we set aside time to meet bi-weekly online on Skype and Google Hangouts and read papers together and try to explore where there might be opportunities for us to bring our diverse expertise together and improve access to opportunity for individuals. But since then, this group has grown to over 300 members across the nation and even the world, and it's grown into various activities, including um, a workshop, and this picture was taken at the first MD4SU workshop, which took place in the summer of 2016. It was the first time that we were all together physically in the same space, so that was interesting for us. Um, but we've also been having recurring annual workshops. We, have, we now have an online colloquium series where we highlight exemplary work from the research community, and we now also have these working groups that are focused on specific domains. So we have working groups on um, uh, global perspectives on inequality. We have a working group on bias and discrimination, on housing, on online labor markets, and many others. And what these working groups are doing is bringing together domain experts and, uh, and computer scientists and social scientists in conjunction with uh, domain experts who have on the ground expertise in order to solve problems in a holistic manner that's attuned to both the social and political context, but also where there are missing opportunities for us to contribute meaning meaningfully to improving uh, social change. And one that I especially want to highlight is at the bottom right corner, uh, we have a working group on developing nations because we noticed that a lot of the computing work that we do is informed by the Western world, and there are many opportunities where we could be contributing meaningfully to nations that might not necessarily be on our radar. And this working group is primarily composed of, uh, of individuals who are currently living in developing nations and also individuals like myself who are from there uh, and moved elsewhere but are still very uh, passionate about making, uh, on making social change uh, back, where they, uh, back, uh, back in their home countries. And this working group um, is, uh, is one where, uh, where I was able to draw from uh, through the uh, Black and AI group that Julia mentioned earlier. Black and AI is a, a multi-institutional, uh, it's a multi-institutional national, um, international organization with over a thousand individuals uh, who are working in the field of AI, all of whom are black or of African descent. 
And I encourage you to both check out Black and AI and Mechanism Design for Social Good and catch me sometime during today if you would like to chat. Thank you.